Now that we've looked at how to connect the Arduino board to the computer, how to connect different electronics to the Arduino board, to program in CH to actually program the Arduino board, it's we've basically covered the the basic functions and statements that we will be needing for inputs and outputs using your um, Arduino library. And um, so where do we go from this now? I mean, if we're not able to use the Arduino board as a standalone device, but we've always got to always have to have it connected to the computer so that the computer can actually control different in inputs and outputs through CH. What's the point about it? Well, this is where we're going to start looking at probably the, the most um, um, impressive feature about CH with the integration of the Arduino board. And that is specifically that we're able to plot graphs. Because we're able to get all this data from the Arduino board in terms of maybe the resistance of the variable resistor that we are um, looking at, or at least the A to D conversion that we've uh, obtained from that specific um, A to D port. And um, we might need to plot that and see how it fluctuates. So that's what we're going to be doing. So in, and essentially, we're going to be plotting data points. And again, this is something that uh, is taken into account that you are familiar in terms of how plotting of um, graphs are done in CH. And you have a basic understanding of programming as covered in other video series. Okay, so we've got again this basic layout that we are going to have for, for programming um, in CH. We're going to start off this, with the C plot plot command. If you remember correctly, this is where um, where we declare what plot is. It's a C plot um, type of variable. And then we're also going to have server my server. Okay, so we declare in that. We're indicating that my server dot attach is to pin 11. Okay, and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in this specific program, I'm going to be changing the inputs of on, with a variable resistor and use that to actually plot the A to D input that we monitoring on a graph. Yet I'm um, outputting it onto the server as well. The main reason for that is just to have some form of feedback to see that there is some change happening um, because you don't want to sort of turn the um, knob of the variable resistor and realize that there might be some slippage happening, it's not really turning, and therefore you're not able to get the accurate reading. Because so that's the reason for the server commands coming up over there. Then I'm going to assign a, as an integer an array num, and this is going to be equal to 200. So essentially what I'm doing is, is I'm, I know I'm going to have an array with um, which I'm going to be plotting all those elements in that specific array. But um, to make it easy, I'm going to have 200 points. And so I'm going to declare the sizes of my arrays to be the size of this array num. And so it just allows me later on, if I want to increase this, as one line I need to change compared to a whole bunch of lines in the future. Okay, so I've also got my int variable resistor value, which is equal to zero. And this is where that array num um, uh, value becomes quite useful. So remember with um, plotting of graphs, you always have to use double. And you're going to, have, you're going to have an array, which is going to be the size of array num. And I'm going to have another double of t. So t is going to be the, the time period um, or how many readings have been obtained so far. Okay, and then I'm also going to have um, a variable i, um, which I'm going to declare over here. So int i is equal to zero. And that's going to be used for for loop, which I'll be looking at next. Okay, so no, usually we would, after we've declared all the variables, we would have a while loop and have a while one. The problem that comes in with plotting of graphs is that the command plot.plotting is not one 
keeps on updating itself all the time. So in other words, you can't have that inside the while loop and hope that it updates the graph as the data changes in the arrays. It's a feature that doesn't allow you to do that. So um, the plot dot plotting command is like a once-off command. Give the output of the plots and then it sort of shuts down the program. It doesn't update automatically. So because of, of that reason, we have to use a for loop. We're using a for loop. We're going to be reading in um, a certain number of values, um, and then we're going to store it into the arrays, and we're going to plot the data in the array. Okay, so we're going to have a for i is equal to 0, i is less than array num. So again, that's a variable array num that's useful. So if I have got more um, more elements I want to include over there, I can always just do it by changing that value over there. Okay, and then I++. Right, so, um, for interval of time, I'm going to have the T of I. So the T of I is going to be equal to I. So that's just going to keep count of how many entries I've done and to keep a record of time. I'm going to then have VARR to read the analog input. So that's going to be analog read A0. Okay. At the same time, I'm going to output that value to the server. So my server dot write of VARR divided by 4. Keep in mind, we divide by 4 because it's an 8-bit output and we had a 10-bit input. And then at the same time, I'm going to say our array ARR of position I is equal to VARR. So we're going to be storing the variable um, value that we've just read from this A to D converter. And we're going to store it into the array and then actually plot that. Okay, so now we're able to um, populate these arrays with data. Now we need to start plotting it. And if you recall correctly, um, plot.title allows us to give a title for the graph. So that's the say resistance. We've got plot.label plot axis x which is time. We've got plot.label plot axis y, which is the VARR value. Again, I'm assuming you all know how to do programming and plotting of, of graphs, um, specifically looking at the uh, series of videos in terms of programming CH as described in the bottom of this video. All right, and then finally, we've got now this data in, in these arrays, and we need to plot this into a 2D data curve. So we're going to have plot.data 2D curve. So our x-axis is going to be the array T, y-axis is going to be the array ARR, and we're going to have ARR num points that needs to be plotted. And then finally, we're going to have plot.plotting. Okay, so let's just see if this runs. Seems to. T of I is not found. Okay, let's stop that. Alright, so I started done the code over there. CH actually bombed out. There was some um, memory that was being used, and that's why it's critical to always save before you run your programs. Um, so as I'm mining this program over here, it comes up with a syntax error, um, telling me it doesn't know what cplot is, and that's because I haven't included the library over there for chplot. So ash include uh, chplot.h. Okay, let's see if it runs now. Okay, double array. Um, 
is missing is a comma missing somewhere. So it's saying it's a some comment that we are missing over there. Can okay, we find the error? And I'm keeping the recording over here to sort of see where the error might be because it is an issue that, um, you know, this is like things that you actually will notice are happening when you run your code. And trying to figure out where the error is is not always easy. Okay, so um, everything appeared correct over there, but if you look carefully, I had a curly bracket over there. That needs to be a square bracket over there. Okay, let's see how it runs now if there's any further errors. Again, I'm saving between intervals all the time. It's all compiled. I can hear noises coming at the Arduino board, so I'm going to stop it there for a moment. Okay, so everything seems to be working as, um, as needed. Um, it's executed all the commands. There's no syntax errors, which is great. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to execute this um, or run a, the, the program and then we'll look at um, going and changing values on the um, variable resistor and then once we've done that we'll see what plot it's, um, it's able to generate. Alright, so as I'm moving over here, the server motor is changing, I can move it up and down. Okay, and it stopped. The graph has been plotted over here. Um, it showed uh, how the variable resistor changed. We went down, we started increasing, I started fluctuating up and down over there. And um, it's over a very short time period. I mean, 200 numbers over here was probably around about, uh, I would guess, a 20 second time period interval. Um, so it is um, probably looking at every um, every few milliseconds a recording is done. We can go and increase the time with the delay function um, over there, um, which we'll have a look at now and see how, how it is possible to do that. I might want to add a delay. I might want to see how the plot might um, appear over a longer time period. and might not be needed for me to take recordings from this analog to digital input so often. So I might be able to add over here in a for loop a delay function. And I'll have a delay of let's say 20 over there. And let's see how that would affect it in terms of running the program now. Okay, so I'm going to be fluctuating over here, making big changes, small changes, going to the maximum, going to the minimum over there. And um, one big change maybe, but Ned stopped. So as I changed the, the variable resistor value, you can see it fluctuating up and down. I went up to completely to the one side, it came down all the way again. And so it, this curve is following exactly as a variable resistance value changed over time. That delay function that you've got in, I've got it over there as 20. You can increase that and have longer intervals. But like I mentioned before, just be careful that the longer the delay is, the more the uh, microcontroller stops for a longer time period. So no other features will operate on that microcontroller whenever a delay function is being executed. Let's have a look at a recap of what we had to look at and what we had to do to plot a graph. So firstly, we had to hash include a chplot.h library. We had the cplot plot um, line that we had to include over there. Remember I had this arr underscore num variable for 200 and that was just for me, allowing me to have more or less um, number of values that I'm going to be recording and having a graph. I had the uh, array arr and array t both um, assigned to be double numbers and they were the size of this arr underscore num um, um, value. 
okay then because with the plot or plotting command I indicated over here it is for one source of data stored in you can't um, re-execute it in terms of updating the graph this specific function doesn't allow that to happen so therefore I did not have a while loop but I had a for loop um, so I knew that this because I've got 200 elements specifically to fill up or whatever the RRR underscore num value is I had those amount of elements to fill up so therefore I had a for loop to um, run exactly that amount of time which was 200 in this case T was just my time that I was looking at just to have a value that was updated every time a new value was, um, was um, being read I read from the analog to digital converter on pin A0 I changed the value of the server motor again um, keep in mind divide by 4 because it was uh, the difference between your 8 bit and your and your 10 bit um, for inputs and outputs over there um, and the server motor was purely there just to see some or other interaction and feedback happening as I changed the variable resistor I then went and stored in the array ARR the value of that VARR um, value that was read from the analog to digital converter and then I had a delay function as I mentioned before a delay function can be useful to delay things but you want to try and minimize the use of delays because it stops all code and you cannot um, then execute anything else while that delay function is being um, executed then we had a normal plotting of graph commands for the title and the label of the x and y axis and we plotted the data 2d curve with the x axis being time our y axis being the ARR or array values and the number of points we plotted was this ARR underscore num which is your number of elements in your array and then we plotted those those points on the graph so with this it like I mentioned also before it's a very introductory thing of how to go about with program microcontrollers um, a very introductory point of view in terms of how to read from the microcontrollers and how to output to microcontrollers and in all this is using CH um, which is a feature of plotting graphs again as I mentioned before we are using Arduino.h library and like I mentioned also before this library is not necessarily the most effective one this is not a, a, um, a, a effect um, caused by soft integration or CH they are using a library that Arduino supplies them and so they don't have control in terms of how that library is programmed um, so for that reason it is not always the most efficient way that the code is being run in that specific library but in saying that though it is um, allowing you to plot graphs so like I mentioned before CVAVR or Code Vision AVR is what I always prefer to program because it allows you to um, get in touch with registers it allows you to um, uh, have certain code to run in the background while other code is being executed that you want to be executed or want specifically to be executed so it's, it's a lot of features in it that allows you to um, gain access to what the microcontroller actually makes available to you the only problem with CVAVR again is you can't plot out graphs and get nice graphs and graphical representation of what is actually happening so um, each package has got its advantage and disadvantage again another um, thing about CH when you program Arduino is using this specific system is that the Arduino board has to be always connected to the computer that you're running the software on while with CV CVAVR or Code Vision AVR you can actually uh, download the code onto the mic controller or onto the Arduino board and execute it completely independent from the computer um, so you don't need to have the computer connected all the time to the microcontroller. controller.